All right, guys. Michael Albrecht here. Uh, just taking this opportunity to give a brief overview of my drum kit. Um, there's been some conversations that have taken place on Facebook recently about setups. Uh, mine is extremely unorthodox, and as a result, I had some people uh, send me some messages wanting to know a little bit more about my kit. So uh, as a drummer, you know we love to talk shop. We're all gearheads, so I'm going to use this opportunity basically to give you a very brief overview of my kit. Now, I am one of those people that I am really, really into planning. And when I start to think about a configuration of a drum kit, a lot of times I will actually take a diagram and draw out what I think the kit's going to look like. And this allows me to get a feel for exactly how the drums are going to be configured and also, more importantly, the wiring that is going to be required because I do use a hybrid of electronic and acoustic drums. So this sit, uh, setup right here is one that I always seem to be coming back to. This seems to be my favorite setup um, of all the configurations that I use. So this feels like home to me. Uh, it may look a little strange to you, but uh, let me give you a little bit of a tour. And um, basically, I look forward to hearing your thoughts on this because I know uh, everybody out there has their own style, their own originality, and uh, this is mine. What you're looking at primarily is a PDP concept kit. Uh, you will notice that I use a bass drum, a floor tom, and two snare drums. Uh, the placement is obviously a little bit different with the floor tom being set up in the front. Uh, the fact that I do not use rack toms of any kind and the fact that I use two different snare drums and two different hi-hats. And I'll tell you about that in just a few minutes. To get a little bit more in close <clears throat> down here, I've got a 18 inch PDP bass drum with a stock PDP head on the back and this wonderful custom question everything logo with the rich sticks and dorsey sticker underneath I'm very very excited to have my own signature stick out with those people and you'll notice if i pan down here there is a d drum trigger that is set up on the batter side of this bass drum and as i come up over here to a 14 inch front set floor tom you will also notice that there is a d drum trigger on that and both of these triggers are set up to provide sort of a hex bass booming sound. So you still hear the individual acoustic tones of the drums, but the triggering of that sound gives them extra oomph and makes them sound extremely loud. Each one is like a cannon. And uh, I can't explain how much I enjoy triggers because it allows me to really pull different sounds out of singular drums and really expands my drum kit beyond the actual physical size of it. As I go around the back, because we're going to stick with drums for the moment, this is my primary snare. It is a Carmine Apice Brass 14-inch signature snare. It is an absolute beast and is the loudest drum I personally have ever played. And panning back here, where there would usually be a floor tom, I've got a maple PDP snare. And this one is used for a little bit more finesse. The head is... Uh, a little bit tighter, a little bit more high-pitched than the Carmine Apice, which is, has a more thicker, booming kind of sound to it. So that's it for drums. Auxiliary percussion. This is a Goombops tambourine mounted in the front. It is one of my favorite pieces of my entire tool bag. Um, and I, I really beat the crap out of this thing. And I did want to add, in this void area in between, um, next week I have a 12-inch Roto-Tom coming, which will be inserted into this particular area. So I will have an acoustic Tom standard, and then I will have a 12-inch Roto-Tom, which will open up the options for me. And over here, we have the Alesis sample pad, which I use to trigger four different kinds of auxiliary percussion. I actually have eight separate kits programmed into this, and the D-drum triggers also run into this unit. So not only is it used as an auxiliary percussion piece, it also serves as a router. Taking a look at the cymbal configurations, over here I've got 16-inch heavy hi-hats. A little further up, I've got a Sabian XS 18-inch crash. Down here above the bass drum is one of my favorite inventions. This is actually a trash stack. It is a 16-inch thin crash on top of a 18-inch heavy crash ride. 
and just gives a tremendous trashy sound that I absolutely love. And then over here, I've got a 14 inch hi-hat. So this allows me by using the 16 inch hi-hat over here and a 14 inch hi-hat here to either play simultaneous different patterns on the hi-hats or keep time on one while I play on the other. Looking down, you'll notice that I have a single bass drum pedal. I do not use double bass pedals. This is a Mapex series pedal. I pride myself on my bass drum foot. And as far as heads, I really use a variety. I've never been a proponent of just using a blanket set of heads. I think the head should be individually catered to each particular drum. So on my Apice snare, I've got an Evans level 360 head. On my 14 inch floor tom, I'm using the Remo Weather King Emperor Clear. On the bass drum, I'm using a clear PDP stock. And on the 13-inch snare drum, I'm using the Remo Weather King Coated Emperor. So you'll notice I use different heads on different drums, which produce different sounds. I'm going to pan down here on the side here. This is my Pro Logics pad that I love and live with every single day. Sitting on top of that is my Tama watch and my phones. I try to play with a click track, uh, at least for a portion of my practices every day. I think it's an invaluable skill. You'll notice down here in piles of stuff, I've got more cymbals on the floor than I do on my kit. I do have a beautiful rack tom back here, but I don't use it. And I've also got an Alesis perk pad, which I may use one day if I get some additional triggers. Going over here to some other gear, I've got the Fender bass amp that I'm using for my electronic percussion. And sitting on top of that, of course, is my MacBook Pro, where all of my recording software is located. And then over here, oh, what do we have here? It is a copy of Fundamentals of Drumming for Kids, the book that I wrote for, uh, with Rich Redmond. I uh, used that book quite a bit in my lessons. And underneath that, this is really an important piece of my arsenal. This is my personal diary, my drummer's diary. And what I do is I go in and I record each and every practice session. What did I like? What didn't I like? What was I good at? What was I not good at? What things do I want to learn how to do? What things do I need to work on? And this is a wonderful way to sort of uh, archive your growth as a drummer and also hold yourself accountable because you can look back at this and realize that you're challenging yourself and this will let you know whether or not you're rising to the challenge. And the last thing I want to share down here, we got a fresh box of Michael Obrecht signature sticks. You can see it's got the Michael Obrecht signature with the Question Everything logo on there. Uh, it is a rich stick. And I am just so absolutely pleased to have my own signature stick. It is absolutely a dream come true. So, as I pan over here to give you guys one last look, basically what I want you guys to take away from this is the idea that everyone has original, everyone has their own style, and don't feel like you have to conform to any type of setup, any type of equipment, uh, uh, name brands, and etc. You are the drummer. Play what you like, love what you like, endorse what you like. But at the end of the day, the most important thing is to be yourself. That's all. Thanks.